It's time now for Alive in the Word, a special video devotional featuring Melissa Garrison. Melissa is the teaching pastor at Safe Haven Bible Center in Fairfield, where you are invited to participate in Bible study on Tuesday or on Thursday. We hope you enjoy this week's edition of Alive in the Word. Welcome back to Alive in the Word. I'm Melissa Garrison, and we've been talking about things that impact our lives on a daily basis. And today, we're going to talk about something huge. It's called busyness, and busyness leads to stress. How many of you got so much on your plate right now that you feel like you can hardly breathe? Maybe you're thinking right now of all the things that you need to be doing while I'm talking to you. You're the one that this message is for. Satan is a master at hoisting us up on this merry-go-round and spinning it faster and faster and faster. And we say we want to get off, but we think there's no way I can stop this or slow down here or lay down that responsibility. But I want you to understand that that is a lie from the enemy. It's taken me a long time to figure out that everything that Satan does with lies is to turn me in a direction to either believe wrong or to do wrong. And both of those are found in busyness. Satan wants to swallow us up in busyness. Why? The word busy, B-U-S-Y, stands for buried under Satan's yoke. If he can keep us buried under his yoke, then we can't go the direction God wants us to go. A yoke is a heavy piece of wood that you put over two animals. And when they're yoked together, the stronger one will always turn that, the, the second one. So in our relationship, who do you think stronger? Satan is. So we're just going in the direction that he wants to take, take us because we are buried under Satan's yoke when we are way too busy. There's an answer to your crazy life. Galatians 5.1, and it says this, Stand fast, therefore, in liberty, with, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. This may surprise you, but if you get sick and you end up in the hospital for two weeks, let's say, life's going to go on without you. And some people that should have been doing their own thing will be forced to do their own thing because you're too sick to do it. I had a friend that was obsessed with vacuuming the house every morning before she left for work. Every morning in a clean house that she cleaned every day. And, and, she, and she did this year after year. One day she came to me and she said, you know what? She said, I woke up one day and my kids were gone and my husband had found somebody else who wanted to do things with him, and I was left with a clean house. I lost everything because I was so focused and so busy that I missed the things that really were important. In America, we wear a badge of busy like it's an honor. Now listen to what people say. I'm so busy, I, I, don't, even, I don't even have time to turn around. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm so busy that I'm up till midnight. Well, I'll tell you, I have things stacked on my desk that you would not believe. What are we doing? We're trying to one-up the other guy. And if somebody says they're busier than us, we're almost offended. Like, really? Nobody's busier than I am. We use excuses for things. I found that out. I want you to listen to this because this is what scares me. We make excuses as to why we're passing this on to our children. We're passing this on. We've got them in every activity, church groups. They can go to gymnastics. We've got dance. We've got all these ball games. And, and, when, and when we make excuses, we say, well, they have to be. We want them to have friends, and we, want, and we want them to be a part. We want the best for them. We want them to do what we never had a chance to do. You know what we're doing? We're passing strongholds down, generational curses to our children. And Satan's sitting back laughing and going, 
I don't have to work on this generation because this one's taking care of it for me. The Word of God turns us in a totally different direction, totally. He takes us to a place of peace and rest. There's a verse in Matthew 28 and it says this, Come unto me, all you who, are, who, are, who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. What am I trying to say? Our priorities are completely off kilter. In Matthew it says this, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What things? The things that we need on a daily basis to enjoy the kingdom of God and, and life. I read somewhere the critical crowds out the necessary. So here's what we do. We're going from crisis to crisis to crisis, and, and at the end of the day, we're totally exhausted. We didn't get done the necessary things, so we're always playing catch up, and life is just taking us in, by, it's just overwhelming us. Isaiah 26 says that if we'll keep our, mind, our eyes on Jesus, he will keep us in perfect peace. And we're thinking, really, really, with all I've got to think on, you think I can think about Jesus? That might be another lie we need to identify. Let me give you some tips for straightening this out. Here's the first thing. We have to learn how to say no. We have to learn to say no. No to overbooking, no to stress, no to crises that come up. We need to be able to say, I can't do that. I can't do that. And we want to do it because, or are forced to do it, because we want to please everybody else. And we end up a mess, and they get everything done because we're doing it for them. Something's not right with that picture. No is a key word for us, and we've got to learn to use it and use it well. Secondly, we have got to limit the activities of our children. We've got to limit them and say, you know what? Pick one or two things that you have a passion for, and that's what we're going to focus on. Instead of saying, shoot, yeah, I'll go over do there, do that. You can do this over here, and then we'll do that. And, and we've got 15 minutes on Friday. You could work in another. Th what are we doing? And all the time, we are placing the curse and the yoke on our own children. Will they be upset? You betcha. They'll cry and they'll shout, and I want to be with Bobby and I want to do what he does. You're the parent or the grandparent. It's time to say, we're going to do this for a year and see how it works. I, I want to say this, you know, in my own life, uh, the third thing is God has planned for us and he has things he wants us to do in assignments. And if you'd asked me this just a little while ago, I would have said, hey, don't tell me I don't work for Jesus. My goodness, I preach and I teach and I go to hospitals and I do this and I do that. and I'm just always working for Jesus. There's a key word there. It's for. Jesus isn't wanting that. He's wanting us to work with him. And there's a huge difference. I know this because God sat me down. He stopped every Do shut every door, stopped every opportunity. I didn't get phone calls. I didn't get anything. Even the doors I tried to kick in and say, I'd be glad to help you, they didn't open anymore. <laughs> they were shut in my face. And I thought, God, what in the world are you doing? Well, he was trying to see that there's something that, that in America we have trouble with. We're doers. And he said, I want you to be. I want you to be with me, be quiet with me, spend time with me, and I refuse to be an add-on in your life. I was guilty. I was adding him on when I had time for him. You see, you can preach, you can teach, you can be in the choir, you can be uh, active in your, in your community with ministry, and you can still miss Jesus. You can miss that time with him. Here's the difference I found out. When I let Jesus take the reins, and I spend time with him every day, I'm quiet with him, and I have that time, and nobody, nobody can get that time. I found out that I got more done with no stress, 
my life completely changed. We make excuses saying, well, I can't do that. You know, I, I've got all this stuff to do, and I can't work God in. And when, I, when my kids are grown, when I retire, when those are excuses, and that's the enemy that's placing that in our heads. I want to give you something here. There are, there are six areas, I'm sorry, there's six areas that we need to work on and make sure they're in balance. Let me tell you what they are. Number one, faith. Is your relationship with God where it needs to be? Number two, fitness. Are you taking care of you physically, spiritually, emotionally, or taking care of everybody else? Third, how about your family? Driving them to an event, driving them in the car somewhere is not spending time with them because you're in, your, you're in another world and probably on your phone. Fourth one, fellowship. We need friends that can build us up. Finances. Get that debt off our shoulders. And finally, have fun with our family. Have fun with the family. When those things balance out with God at the center, your whole life will change. And busyness will be a thing of the past. Wait and see. Let's pray. Father, today we just ask that you bring this knowledge to us and bury it in our spirit so we know how to come out from under this busyness. Lord, help us to put you back in the center where you belong and crawl off the thrones ourselves, that throne of busyness. Lord, I thank you right now that you're changing our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed this week and stop this craziness. <laughs>